Hi, this is Jenny from fluffmonger.com, and in this video tutorial, I'll be showing how to make the tiny version of my free otter pattern that you can find on my website. The tiny otter sews pretty much the same as the large otter, with a few tiny exceptions that I'll explain along the way. You want to download and print the pattern. I like to print the pattern on cardstock so that the pieces are easier to trace. And I've included a one quarter inch seam allowance for all of the pieces. But for the tiny pieces, like the tail, the arm, the leg, the ear, and the heart, I find that it's easier to be able to see the stitch line, so I like to trace the stitch line. And when I cut off the pieces, I just cut along the stitch line, and then I leave the seam allowance if there's an area where it will connect to the body. So for the arm, I have that little quarter inch seam allowance only at the top where it's going to connect to the body, and then the rest I just have the stitch line. And for the tail, and then also for the heart, I kind of left a little tab there just so I know where the opening is that I'm going to use to turn it. And I'll show you what I mean later on. So I'm using organic cotton and hemp fleece, but you can use polyester fleece or a similar stretch fabric. And with um, natural fleece, it has a fuzzy side, and then you can see the grain line on the back. And that grain line is what you're going to line the arrow up with. So whenever you trace your pieces, you want to make sure that that arrow lines up parallel with the grain line. And I'm going to start with tracing the tiny pieces first. So I'm going to take a pen. And I'm just going to put my pieces on the fabric, let it fold it over, and start tracing. Now, since I cut the seam allowance off of these, I want to make sure I leave plenty of room in between each piece. So I'm tracing two arms because they're two arms and two legs. There's one tail, so I'm only going to trace the tail one time. And those little, that little tab is just so that I know that that area needs to be left open for turning. And the ear is the tiniest piece. And I've left a quarter inch seam allowance, but if you're new to sewing or if you're using a thicker fabric, or even, I'm, I'm gonna leave an extra piece too just because I like to have a little bit extra, I'm going to trace the stitch line. I'm going to draw where the quarter inch seam allowance is, and then I'm just gonna extend that line down. And that's because when I flip this inside out, I'm going to kind of fold the ears in you might be able to see they're kind of folded in, and that's a lot easier to do if you have that extra length at the bottom. And next you want to stitch these. Now you can stitch these on the machine or you can stitch them by hand. I'm going to do most of my otter on the machine, but I will show you how to do it by hand as well in case you don't have a sewing machine or you don't know how to use a sewing machine. So I'm going to set that aside, and this is what it will look like after you've stitched it on the sewing machine. Um, I backstitched at the beginning and end of each seam, and then I just stitched around. And I used a fairly small stitch length because there's some curves, and if you use a really large um, stitch, you won't be able to get the details. So if you want to hand stitch instead of using the sewing machine, you want to use a back stitch. I'm going to show how to sew the ears since they're probably the hardest part to sew. They're pretty tiny on the otter. So I've threaded a needle, and I have a good bit of thread since I'm going to be going forward a stitch and then back a stitch for the back stitch. Now on the ears, I have that quarter inch seam allowance right there, and then I have that extra, and that extra area is so that we can turn them inside out and then fold them in. So I'm going to start a little bit before that quarter inch seam allowance. 
and you want to pull your thread through but not all the way through and then I'm going to go forward a little bit if you were making a large otter you could make larger stitches than I'm going to here but since he's tiny I want to make sure that all of these curves show up so I'm going to go back in And now to back stitch, I'm going to take my needle and come back through that first point. And I'm going to do that twice just to make sure that it's not coming out. And then I'm going to come forward about the same distance. And then go back in again where that other stitch ended. And I'm going to keep going forward. So I'm coming just a little bit in front of that stitch. And then going back where the other stitch ended. And now we're into the seam allowance for the ear. You may decide that you want to trim this excess off, so you'll want to make sure you have a few more back stitches right here. So if you cut this fabric off, you'll have a secure knot right there. Or not really knot, but you'll just have a few stitches to hold it in place. So I'm going to go over the stitch twice. And this is the only piece that you'll need to do two of those uh, repetitive back stitches. And that's just because we're going to cut that extra fabric off right there. So if you were doing like the arm or the leg, you would just pretend that this is the start and you would do your two or three stitches right there and then start. So I'm going back where that stitch ended. And this might look a little sloppy because I'm kind of far away from where I'm stitching. I'm trying to look at the back of the camera. I'm also not the best at hand stitching. So I'm just going forward a stitch and then going back to where the last stitch ended. Going forward a stitch and going back to where the last stitch ended. I'm going to do this all the way around until I get back to there. I'm going to back stitch and then I'm going to go up to here and back stitch again. And you want to make sure you're taking small stitches around the curves, otherwise, that detail won't show up. You'll end up with little points on his hands and feet. So now I'm kind of aware that it's kind of wiped off a little bit, but now I'm kind of at that point right there, that corner. So I'm going to do a few back stitches right here. And that was way too big, but oh well. <laughs> and now I can head on to do this area right here. Actually, I think that's the end. I really wiped that away. So I'm going to do a few more back stitches right here. Okay, so now I'm going to go a few more beyond that. 
so I'm going to do a few back stitches here. Over that last stitch. And now that should be secure and that's ready to cut out. And I'm going to show how to cut it out from the brown fabric. If I can find my scissors. I'll just use my paper scissors. So with the ears, I'm just going to cut that away from the main fabric. I'm going to leave a little bit of extra space beyond that seam allowance. And then I'm just going to cut close to the stitch line, but not too close. So normally I would leave about a quarter inch seam allowance, but since this is tiny, I'm going to go maybe a little bit over an eighth of an inch. And I might even go a little bit smaller than that. You'll probably want to make an extra ear just to test with to see how um, small you can make your seam allowance without having any holes. Um, this is why I like hemostat clamps because you can just slip the end in and then flip it inside out. Now I will say that this works with the natural fleece. If you're using a polyester fleece or um, some sort of thicker fabric, you may have to use, right now I'm just kind of stretching it out, you may have to use a thinner fabric for the inside of the ear. So for the back you can use fleece and then for the inside of the ear you can use a little piece of like jersey fabric from an old t-shirt or something. And the reason I say that is because we're going to take this and fold it in like that. And I'm actually going to um, base stitch before I do that, but I just wanted to show you why you might need um, a thinner piece of fabric. So I'm going to go over to the machine and base stitch across that so I can show you how to put the ears in or what the ears should look like. So if this is your first time using a sewing machine, you'll want to read your manual or watch a video on how to use your particular sewing machine because every machine has some different settings. And for sewing the pieces like the arms, the legs, the tail, and the ears, what we're going to do is just stitch around that stitch line that we traced with the sewing pattern. So like the big pieces, they have a seam allowance already on them. But for the small detailed pieces, I only left the seam allowance at the end. So we're actually going to be stitching on that line that we traced. So you want to make sure your needle is up. Take both the top and bobbin thread. And center the very corner of the foot or whatever piece you're sewing underneath your needle. Lower your needle. Lower your presser foot. And then you're going to stitch forward a few stitches and then stitch back. Now, depending on what type of fabric you're using, you may want to use a stretch stitch. A stretch stitch goes forward and back so that it um, allows the fabric to stretch a little bit without breaking the thread. So this is what a stretch stitch looks like. It's going to go forward and back. And regardless of whether you use a straight stitch or a stretch stitch, you'll always want the back stitch at the start and end of your seam. So I'm going to press my reverse lever, or you might have a button on your machine, and I'm going to go backwards. And then I'm going to go forward again. Now most machines, you'll probably just use a straight stitch. If you're using um, polyester fleece, a straight stitch is fine for that type of fabric, but if you're going to be giving this to a small child or if you just want a really durable um, stuffed animal or if you're using natural fleece like I am, you'll want to use a stretch stitch or a zigzag stitch. So I'm going to turn back to my stretch stitch and I'm just going to go all the way around and then back stitch at the end. When you get to the curves, you're going to want to lift the presser foot, pivot just a little bit, and lower it again. And I have another video that I'll provide a link for in the um, description for this video that will show you a more detailed video on sewing curves. So whenever it starts to turn, just pick up your presser foot, pivot, and lower it. <laughs> 
Ideally, you would leave a little bit more fabric around the edge, but I uh, wasn't paying attention when I cut my fabric, so it's a little bit close right there. I'm going to go all the way to the end and I'm going to back stitch. And I'm going to bring my needle all the way up, lift my presser foot, and then I can pull the fabric out. And then you can just clip close to the fabric, but don't cut the fabric. You want to do that on the back and the front. And then you're just going to do that for all the other pieces. So I'm going to do the arms now. And now these pieces are ready to cut out. So for these little teeny tiny ears, I want to base stitch along the bottom of my fabric. That way it'll keep them closed when I fold them together. And you may want to base stitch by hand if it's too hard to do on the machine. And a base stitch is just basically a running stitch that doesn't have any back stitching at the beginning or end. So now I've basted both of the ears at the bottom, and a base stitch is just a straight stitch with a long stitch length that doesn't have any back stitching at the beginning or the end. So you can pull it out at the end if you want, but this is actually going to be inside the otter, so you won't even have to worry about it. So I'm going to take the ear and I'm going to fold it in. Now this is pretty difficult. If you don't want to do this step, you don't have to. If you want to make the ears out of felt, you can. That's easier. And you don't even have to have ears on the otter. I mean, he'll still look like an otter if you don't have any ears on there. So don't let the difficulty of the ears deter you from making this otter if you want to. So I'm, I've kind of pulled the fabric. Um, I've kind of stretched it out the end before I basted to make sure that I have plenty of space for folding it in. So I'm going to fold it in. And I sometimes do this on the machine, but I'm going to do it by hand because it's kind of difficult. So I'm going to come up. So that's about the extra space that I added at the bottom, and then that's the quarter inch seam allowance. So somewhere between there and there, I want to have um, my knot. So I'm going to fold this in and come up through the back. And then I'm just going to go ahead and come straight across to make sure that's folded down. And since this is inside the body, it doesn't really matter what it looks like, so I'm basically just going to backstitch over it a few times to make sure that that stays folded down. And if, um, if the fabric's kind of thick and it's hard to go through, you can use a thimble, you can use your fingernail. Probably don't recommend using your fingernail because I've kind of slipped it up underneath my nail sometimes. So you can use a thimble or you can kind of put it on the table and then just push it through that way. So um, I'm going to go through and this is actually foam board so I'm going to go on my table and push it that way and push down. And so now that's pretty secure so I'm just going to tie a knot on the back.
So now that I have the ears done, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the arms, the legs, and the tail. So I'm going to cut with somewhere around an eighth of an inch or three sixteenths of an inch all the way around the outside, just enough so that when I flip it, there um, aren't any holes in it and it's not so thick that it won't flip. And then for the tail, I'm cutting along that seam, out, seam allowance tracing. And then those notches are there to remind me that that's where I'm going to leave an opening for turning it. And since I stitched in to that area, I'm going to clip the corners so that it flips easier. So now I can start turning these inside out. I'm going to use my hemostat clamps again. Oh, and when I'm flipping them inside out, I also use the blunt end to run along the seams. That just helps open them up. So now I can stuff all of these, and you can use whatever type of stuffing you like. You can use polyfill. I'm using um, organic wool. So I'm just going to start stuffing these. And you don't want to stuff all the way to the end. You really don't need very much at all, because I'm going to stuff these, and then I'm going to baste the arms and legs close so that they don't shift around when I'm sewing the animal together. So these are all stuffed about halfway to two-thirds of the way up. And then the last is the tail. And I'm going to stuff that all the way up to where those corners are. One of the main reasons I really like um, natural fleece over polyester fleece is you can kind of sculpt it. Uh, this organic cotton and hemp fleece is really easy to kind of just push into the place that you want it to be. So I don't know if you noticed, but when I stitched the um, otter tail, I had like a corner on it because I didn't do a very good job going around the curve. But with the natural fabrics, you can just kind of push on it and it'll pop right out. And then you can kind of mold it into whatever shape you want. With polyester fleece, you're kind of left with whatever stitching you did, so if you didn't do a great job, it's definitely going to show up when you flip it inside out and stuff it. So, I have my tail done now, and then in a few minutes I'm going to fold that in, and then stitch along there with a ladder stitch. So now I'm going to base the opening of the legs and arms closed. So I'm just using the straight stitch function on the longest stitch setting, and I'm not back stitching before or at the end. And I just did this, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch from the edge of the fabric. So now these are ready to put inside the otter. So if you haven't cut out the body pieces yet, I'm gonna show you how to do that now. The pattern pieces have the quarter inch seam allowance, and then I like to put little notches wherever the matching points are for like the arms and the ears. That way when I go around it with my pen, my pen head will just go into, the, or my marker head will just go into those little notches. So for the belly piece, 
I'm lining that up with my grain line. And if you can't see the grain line, it stretches uh, the opposite direction of the grain line. So the grain line goes this way and it stretches this way. So I'm going to put my outer belly on there. And then I'm just going to go around. And there's a little uh, indicator right here for where the tail stitch line will be. So after we cut this out, I'll flip it over and I'll trace that on the fuzzy side of the fabric since I want to know where it is, where it is once I've stuffed it. And then for the headpiece, you're going to trace it the same way. But once you have um, it traced and cut out, you can flip it over and then line it back up and then you can mark where the eyes are. Now we're going to start working on the otter's body. If you haven't already, make sure you mark where the tail is going to go on the outside of the stuffed animal or on the fuzzy side of the fabric. And then we're going to pin these two pieces together for the front. So the easiest thing to do is to match up the center of both of these pieces for starting. So I'm going to Flip them right sides together, so fuzzy side to fuzzy side. And I'm just going to find that center point there and line it up with that one. And then I'm going to um, do the end pieces. And then I like to just put a lot of pins along the curve. So I want to make sure that the edges of the fabric are lined up. Little pieces of wool everywhere. So the edges of the fabric are lined up and I'm just putting in a whole lot of these going all the way around. And now you can either hand stitch with a back stitch starting on one of the ends, back stitching and coming across and then back stitching again, or you can sew it on the, on the sewing machine and that's what I'm going to do. So now I'm just going to start on this end, stitch in a few stitches, back stitch, and then stitch all the way across to the other side and then back stitch a few times there, and all the while using a quarter inch seam allowance. So now I've stitched these two pieces together so I can unfold it and I'm going to finger press the seam allowance open. So I'm just using my fingernail and running along that um, seam. And so now you have the front of the otter. If you want, you can go ahead and embroider the face now so you can do the eyes and the nose. I'm going to wait until the end, but if you want to do that before you um, stuff, I would go ahead and do that now. Next, I'm going to, so this is the back, and I'm going to put the front and back pieces right sides together, and then I'm going to stitch 
all the way around in a U shape. So I'm going to start where this leg goes, stitch up, and I'm going to leave a spot for the arm, stitch to the ear, leave a spot for the ear, stitch to the other ear, leave that spot, stitch to that arm, leave that open, and then stitch to here. So I'm going to pin these pieces together first. And the less experienced you are, the more pens you'll want to use. Um, the fabric can shift a little bit, and if you're not prepared for that, you'll definitely want to have pens in there to hold the fabric together. I'm just putting little pens to remind myself where to leave an opening. Actually, I'm going to use bigger pens. I like to use bigger pens so that I remember that I need to stop there. So I'm just going to stitch around from here to here, here to here, here all the way to here, here to here, and then finally here to here. And you can use the hand stitching for back stitch. You can use the back stitch if you want the hand stitch, or you can use the sewing machine, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to start right over here at the corner. Lower my needle, lower my presser foot. I'm going to do a back stitch and then I'm going to stitch to the arm spot. And I'm going to back stitch. I'm going to lift up the needle, lift up the presser foot, pull the, I'm kind of pulling the thread out of the bobbin as I'm pulling the fabric. I'm going to go to that next spot, take my needle out, and then I'm going to back stitch again until I get here to here, and then I'll back stitch there. I'm going to do the same thing again, lift the presser foot, come over to this for the end of the ear opening. Back stitch. And this isn't an opening, this is just holding the top um, piece, the top matching points together. the needle, lift the presser foot, I feel like I have a snag so I'm going to start over right here. Sometimes you can get away with not pulling it off of the, um, not cutting your threads each time and you can just go to the next spot like I did here and I have that little thread. Sometimes it gets hung, so that's what I'm doing right here. I'm just starting over again, so. Lowering my needle, lower the presser foot, and I'm going to back stitch. And then I'm going to come to the next spot. Make sure that this um, piece doesn't get folded forward, so you wanna make sure that it's pushed down. Lifting the needle, lifting the presser foot. Back stitch. And then stitch all the way all the way to the end of back stitch. So now I've stitched my body pieces together and I've left an opening for the arms and the ears. So now I can put them in. The arms are pretty easy to put in because they're going to line up with the edge of the fabric and they're just going to look like this inside of the body. The ears, however, you have to make sure that they are facing the right way. So if you think about an animal, um, 
the fold of their ears is going to, if they laid their ears down like if it was a bunny rabbit, the fold of their ears would touch their face. So I want to make sure that the fold of the ears are touching the face. And this is the side that has the face, so I need to make sure that I'm putting them in this way so that this fold is touching that part of his head. So I'm going to put the ears in first. Now since we added that extra fabric to the ears, we're going to need to kind of move them out until they're the right length. So these have about that much length, so I don't want to have a bump that's bigger than that, so that looks about right. And I want to make the other one have about the same size bump. Then I can take, <clears throat> excuse me, then I can take the arms and put them in. And when you trace the pattern piece, one of the corners was a little bit longer than the other. If you get it flip-flopped, it's not a big deal because once we stitch the heart on, you won't even notice. But if you can, try to line up that longer points or that longer, taller corner with the top part. And since we didn't add extra seam allowance, we just left the quarter inch. It should line up perfectly with the edge of the fabric. Do the same with this arm. And if you are new to sewing, you might want to leave the arms just a little bit out just so that you don't lose the arm when you're stitching on the machine because the machine will kind of um, shift the fabric and you might end up with the arm not all the way stitched in. So now you can take this on the sewing machine and you can back stitch, stitch across, back stitch on each one of these spots, or you can stitch it by hand. So I'm going to show how to stitch it by hand, and then I'm also going to uh, finish it off on the sewing machine. So I have my threaded needle, and obviously don't use green, but I want you to be able to see the um, contrast in the fabric. I'm actually going to flip it to this side. So I'm going to come a little bit before where this arm starts. And you want to come in a quarter inch from the edge, so you want it to line up with these. But since I'm going to stitch it on the sewing machine, I'm going to stitch just a little bit over so that I can go back over it with brown thread and you won't be able to see it. So you'll want to connect right here if you're hand stitching, but since I'm using the machine, I'm just going to go a little bit above it. So I'm starting below the arm. I'm going to back stitch a few times. And then I'm going to come up to the arm, and I want to make sure that I'm grabbing pretty close to the edge of the fabric there for the arm, because if you just go and stitch right in the middle, if I start here, stitch in the middle, and then go up here, my arm's just going to flip around because it just has that one pivot point. So you want to make sure that you get a number of stitches inside of the arm. And make sure that you're going through all the pieces of the fabric. So make sure you're catching the belly side, the arm, and the front side of the fabric, or the, the back of the fabric, the back piece with each one that you go through. Or with each stitch that you make. And as I said, I'm pretty terrible at hand stitching and it's really hard to see from here, so Hopefully yours will look better, but um, if it doesn't look fantastic, you can go back over it again. Try not to stitch your hand. <laughs> and I made sure that I went through a little bit of the arm there, and now I'm going to I'm actually going to do that again because I'm not sure that I went through the arm on both the top and bottom. 
So now I'm going to go up a little bit past the top of the arm and then backstitch a couple of times. And then you can cut your thread. And if you want to tie a knot, like if this is going to be played with a lot, you might actually want to tie a real knot instead of just backstitching. Because sometimes things get played with a lot and it kind of puts a lot of stress on those seams. So if you're hand stitching, you will do that for both of the arms and the ears. But I'm going to sew the rest of this on the sewing machine and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. So now I'm going to stitch the arms in place and I'm going to do the arms first and then I'll do the ears. So I'm going a little bit before the little armhole area. And I'm going to back stitch. And when working with really small pieces like this, it's good to have your seam ripper handy because you can kind of push on stuff and hold it in place and kind of feed it through. Just make sure you don't hit it with, um, make sure you don't hit the tip with your needle. So I'm going to kind of press it down and guide it through. And then once I get past the arm, I'm going to backstitch. I'm going to do the same for the other side. And since I hand stitched with that green thread, I'm going to go in a little bit farther to make sure that I cover that up. So now I'm going to do the ears, and I'm actually going to base stitch these in place first just to make sure that one of the ears isn't longer than the other and to make sure that they're positioned correctly. So I'm going to switch over to my stretch stitch function and I'm just going to base these in place. So now I can flip them inside out and make sure that they're even. And they are, so now I can flip it back again and go back over it with a stretch stitch. Or a permanent stitch, whatever stitch you're using. So now that I've sewn in the arms and ears, I can go ahead and put the legs in. And one of the legs has a longer corner on each side, so that longer corner is going to go on the outside edge, and they're just going to go in like this. 
So I'm going to put them in the body. And these have enough width that I can kind of put a pin in them to hold them in place. So I'm going to make sure that, make sure you have that corner tucked as far into the edge as you can. Because you want them to have a round edge right here, otherwise you'll end up with kind of a bigger corner than that one. I didn't get all the way over and if you don't push it over far you'll end up with a corner on the edge. So I'm pushing it as far over as I can get it. And ideally you want it to line up with the edge of the fabric, but again if you're new to sewing you might want to leave just a little bit extra hanging off the edge so that if your fabric shifts you still get the whole leg in there when you stitch. And I'm just going to kind of pin it this way to make sure it doesn't shift. And I'm going to do the same for the other leg. So the longer corner goes there. Then I'm going to pin that in place. And now I'm going to stitch it on the machine. And if you decide to hand stitch with a back stitch, again, make sure that you back stitch a few times at the beginning and at the end. And make sure you get plenty of stitches along the width of the leg. Otherwise, it won't be in there as um, securely as you'd like for it to be. So now I'm going to stitch the legs in. And I'm going to start with a back stitch, stitch across the leg, and then back stitch here. And it's really not a bad idea to base stitch this as well, just because the fabric can shift and you don't want to stitch across it and not get the whole leg stitched in. So if you're new to sewing, I definitely recommend basting this first and make sure that you stitch through on both sides. I also recommend using your uh, seam ripper to hold it in place while you're feeding the fabric through. And you want to make sure you don't go past that um, matching point right there, otherwise you won't have enough room to turn it inside out, or turn it right side out. So I'm going to start at the matching point, uh, stitch in a few stitches and back stitch, and then come all the way across. Make sure you don't sew over your pins. So now that you have your arms, legs, and ears stitched in, we can clip the corners of the seam allowance down here. You want to clip close to the stitch line, but you want to leave a little bit of space so the fabric doesn't unravel or anything. And then for the ears, if you stitch them on the machine, just go ahead and cut them down to match up with the edge of the fabric. If you hand stitch them, you may just want to leave them that long just in case you didn't stitch close enough together or you didn't back stitch enough because if you cut right through your hand stitching it may unravel. And now you can flip it uh, right side out. So I'm just going to take my um, hemostat clamps I'm going to take the blunt end and run it around all of the seams. 
so now we basically have an otter body. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to stuff them and then use a ladder stitch to close the opening. So what I like to do before stuffing is fold the seam allowance in. So I'm folding that quarter inch seam allowance in so that it looks kind of like a mouth. Make sure that it's pressed and nice and neat. And then I'm going to just base stitch along that so that it stays folded down because when we um, are stuffing it, it's going to get stretched out and it's a little bit harder to find the edge of it. So I'm going to get some thread and then I'm going to base stitch that down. So I'm going to base stitch this down. So I'm just taking big stitches. Just that I have a little running stitch. I'm going to come around to the other side. And do the same thing. And that's just going to give me a little bit of security and making sure that I don't stretch out the seam allowance too much. That's really easy to do with stretch fabrics. So now I can start stuffing. And again, you can use fiber fill, um, or I'm going to use wool. I like to make sure I really press it all the way to the edge of the seams so that you don't have ripples in your seams or any spots that don't have stuffing in them. And I like to make sure I stuff all the way around the edge first. Okay, so now I can ladder stitch the bottom closed. So now I'm going to ladder stitch this opening closed. I have a full length tutorial for how to do a ladder stitch, so if you're not able to see as well with this thin thread, you can watch the other video. I have a link for it in the description below. So I have my thread knotted, I pulled it through to the right side of the fabric, and now I'm just going to come straight across to the other side and grab a little bit of fabric just to make a little stitch and then I'm going to come straight across grab about the same amount of fabric and then I'm going to come across again Now you can see what look like rungs of a ladder, which is why it's called a ladder stitch. I'm going to come across again. 
I'm just grabbing the same amount of fabric each time. And then when I get halfway, I like to just go ahead and pull it taut. And then I take a little bit of extra um, stuffing and make sure that this is nice and stuffed. And once I get to the last stitch, I'm going to pull it taut. Make sure my stuffing is down in there. And if any of your stuffing is hanging out, you can just kind of so now I'm going to tie a knot. Make sure it's secure. And then I'm going to bury the thread tail. So I'm just going to stick this needle back into the fabric right where I came out right there. And then I'm going to just snip it. And so now we can move on to the next step. So now that we have the body made, we can go ahead and stitch the tail onto the back. So I have the tail that we made earlier, and I've folded in the seam allowance. And so now I'm going to use a ladder stitch to close it just like we did on the bottom of the outer. So again, you'll use a matching thread, and I'm using green just so that you can see. And I'm just making sure my knot is secure at the beginning of the seam. I'm going to come back out to the right side of the fabric. You can kind of tuck your knot inside so that it will get covered up by the stitch. So I'm going to go across to the other side of the fabric. Cross again. Now once I get to the end, I'm going to tie a knot. And bury my thread tail. So now I can attach the tail to the body so I have my area marked and fabric can shift around, especially stretch fabric, so you might want to make sure that it's still 
kind of in the center of his body. Looks like my mark kind of goes there to there, so I'm going to move it over just a little bit. And I'm just going to use a big pen to kind of hold it in place to get started. I'm going to use matching thread this time since you've seen how to do the ladder stitch. So I have some brown thread. I'm going to tie a knot at the end. And I'm just going to come up through one of the corners. And you can see the knot tails right there, but we'll just stitch over them and you won't see them in a minute. So I'm going to make a knot to attach the tail to the body with this thread. I'm going to make a second knot to make sure it's tight. And then I'm going to make sure I didn't shift anything. And then I can start ladder stitching. So I'm going to come into the body, make a stitch, go to the tail, make a stitch. So this is just like before, except the pieces are separate. So I'm coming across and making a stitch on the body, then coming back and making a stitch on the tail. I'm just going back and forth to make those ladder rungs again. Now that I'm to the other corner, I'm going to go ahead and make a knot just to make sure that it doesn't loosen up when I flip the tail up in a minute. So now I'm going to turn them around. At this point, make sure that it's straight because if it's crooked, you can still kind of um, undo it at this point, or you can just ladder stitch over it again. So I'm going to flip the tail up, and now I'm going to do the same thing on the bottom. 
I'm going to make another knot. And then I can bury the thread tail. So I'm just going to insert the needle right where that knot is. Pull it out. And now my otter has a little tail. So now it's time to make the eyes and the nose. So you're going to want to thread a needle with some embroidery floss. And it's kind of hard to see, but I have this long piece over here and then a shorter piece on this end. And I don't have a knot at the end. You can make a knot if you want and just hide it under the armpit. But um, I mean, that's probably the best way to do it if you're new to sewing or embroidery because it's easy to just pull that thread through. But I'm just going to start kind of down here and come up through the bottom of the nose. And I'm just going to make sure that I have a little bit of a tail here at the end. I'll snip it loose later. I just want to make sure I don't pull it all the way out. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a satin stitch. And a satin stitch is basically just a bunch of parallel lines that go all the way across the edge of the nose. So I'm going to start in the middle, come straight up to the top, and then I'm going to come out the bottom right next to that other thread, right next to that point right there. And I'm going to try to follow along my marking. You want to pull that tight. Then you're going to go up to the top, go right next to where you came out, come across, and do the same thing again. Coming next to this thread and along that line that I've drawn for the nose. This may not turn out that well either because I'm kind of far away looking at the back screen of my camera. It helps to have a seam ripper handy so that you can go in and kind of pull out the threads and even them up if one of them is too tight. So now I'm going to come back here and come through that first point. 
I'm going to do the same thing on this side. come out under his armpit. And I'm going to make a little knot that I want to hide under his arm. And if you don't want to go through and tie a knot like that twice, you can just wrap it around like that. I'm going to I'm gonna do that again. Now I can bear the thread. And that will be covered up when we put his arm down. And for this one, you can just cut it. Don't pull it too tight or it'll make his nose um, tighten. But just cut it right above the fabric and then you can just rub it in. Before embroidering the eyes, I'm going to needle sculpt the eye area because I want it to have little indentations. You can skip this step if you don't want to do it. And I also have another video tutorial that goes a little bit more in depth and a little bit more slowly with needle sculpture. So if I go too quickly or if you can't see very well in this video, then um, you can watch that video and I have a link for it in the description. So before I get started, I have my eyes marked, but I still just kind of like to put a little needle or a pin in there to make sure I have them where I want them to go. Mm. Hopefully that looks right. Okay, so now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go. I've um, anchored a knot underneath the armpit because when we put his arms down, you're not going to be able to see that. So I'm going in where I've anchored that knot and I'm going to come out where this pin is. And I'm going to go in kind of right next to it. You want to leave a few little threads from the fabric in between. Otherwise, it'll just come out the other side. And I'm going to come through where the other pen is. And I'm 
and kind of pull it as tight as you want it to be. And I'm going to pull it tight again in a second. So I'm going to go grab a few little threads of the fabric, take that pin out. And then I'm going to come out where that other knot is over there. And before I pull this through, I'm going to pull it tight on the other side. And I'm kind of squeezing his head so that he has the little indentations. And if one spot's too tight, you can kind of pull his arm or his other arm with the fabric and then let the thread go. So now I'm going to tie a knot over here next to the other one. But I'm keeping my thumb on the thread so I don't let it go, otherwise it'll loosen up the eyes. I'm going to tie another knot. And I'm going to bury the thread tail. So I have some of my embroidery, embroidery floss threaded through my needle. And I have a knot at the end, and that knot's going to be hidden under his arm. And if you're afraid that the knot might go through the fabric, you can just make another knot on the fabric. So I'm going to grab a few threads of the fabric. And then I'm going to split open that end of the knot, take my needle through it, and now that's secure. So I'm going to come up through the eye again, and I'm going to put my little pins in there to make sure I'm still in the right spot. It was close enough. I didn't do the best job on that nose since I was kind of far away from looking at it, but that's good enough. So I'm going to put the needle under his armpit, come out where that pin is, I'm going to take my hemostat clamps, these are really handy for bringing needles through. Just be sure to cover your eyes. Um, wear glasses or something because sometimes it comes through pretty quickly and you don't know where that needle is going to go. So now I'm going to make, you can either make a colonial knot or a French knot. I'm just used to making a colonial knot and I also have a video on how to do this for embroidering eyes. So to make a colonial knot you make a backward C, come under the top of the C with your needle, so under the thread, and then you wrap around it and make a figure eight. And then you go back into the fabric, leaving a few uh, threads from the fabric in between. You pull it tight and then come through to the other side. I'm going to do the same thing on this side, make a backward C, needle under the top of the C, wrap it around, make a figure eight, go back into the fabric, pull the thread tight. and then come out through the armpit.
ties. So I can just tie a knot underneath this armpit, bury the thread tail, and then I will be ready for the heart. So now I'm ready to make the heart. So making the heart is pretty much exactly the same as making the otter tail. You're just going to take your pattern piece with a seam allowance cut off, leaving that little amount that shows you where you need to leave it an opening. Trace around it, and then you can either stitch by hand or on the sewing machine. Back stitch at the beginning, stitch all the way around the heart, and make sure that your needle goes through those points at the top and the bottom, otherwise you'll lose those little um, indentations. And after you've done that, you can cut it out, flip it inside out, and then you can stuff it. Once it's stuffed, you can close it up with a ladder stitch. And bury the thread tail. So the last part is just ladder stitching the paws to the heart. Then we'll make the whiskers and then we'll be done. So now I'm going to attach the paws to the heart and I'm going to ladder stitch them down so that they're um, held securely in place. But I found that the easiest way to keep the arms from just moving around and loosening up the thread is to start with, I like to use a doll needle. You can use any long needle that you have. And I'm just going to make a knot in one of the paws. And you don't have to worry about those thread tails because they'll be covered up. And then I'm going to figure out where I want them to be touching the heart. And I'm just going to Go through the heart. And then do the same thing on the other paw. Once the heart is held in place, just pull the thread pretty tight. And then I'm going to loop back into the heart. So pull that thread tight. And then I'm going to tie a knot. And if that's all you want, you can be done there, but if you think this is going to get um, a lot of love and be played with a lot, you'll definitely want to do this more securely. So I'm going to take some a smaller needle, some thread, tie knot at the end, come underneath this paw, and what I'm going to be doing is making a ladder stitch like this, basically, and then tie knot at the top. And I also have a video on attaching parts um, where I, I think I actually attach, I can't remember if I attach a heart to paws or not, but um, it's essentially the same thing. So I'm going to tie a knot or just secure this thread to the fabric. And then I'm going to just start ladder stitching. And just make sure your thread tails are kind of tucked back behind there. 
So I'm going to tie a knot here. Make sure the thread is tight. I'm going to tie another knot and bury the thread tail, and then I'll do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to do the same thing on this side, and then I'll make the whiskers. So now we are to the last step where we make the whiskers. And what you're going to do is take a needle, and you're going to thread one piece of thread, and you're going to fold it over and take the looped end through the eye of the needle. And I know that's kind of hard to see with that. So I have a needle with a really big eye, and then I have some green thread that will hopefully show up. So I just have this one piece, I'm folding it over so that there's this loop at the end. I take the loop and go through the eye of the needle. And then now this and this are the same. So I'm going to take this needle and you want to uh, make sure your whisker points are marked. Um, for the large otter, I usually do three, but for the smaller one, I think two is fine, but you can do three as well if you want, like two or three on each side. So I'm going to go through one of the whisker points and I'm just going to grab a little bit of fabric, just a tiny little thread there, pull this through, and you don't want to pull it all the way through, you want to keep the thread tails. You just want that loop to pop through. So once the loop comes through, you take it off of the needle, and then you open up that looped end, you pick up these thread tails, and pull it like that. So I have another one already threaded. So I'm going to come down here, pick up just a couple of threads, Pull it through while holding the tails. And take that looped end and pull these thread tails through it. And then you can trim the whiskers to whatever length you like. I'll trim those up in a minute, but I'm going to do the other side, and then you're done.